Good day, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this 2021 World Ocean Forum in Busan for inviting me once again to deliver a message on the future vision of cities in the East Asian region. The forum's theme, the future of ocean transformation, is relevant and timely. While the global pandemic has affected the way we work, interact, and travel, the issues confronting our coast and ocean before the pandemic have not disappeared, and we need to act with a greater sense of urgency. The issues on marine plastic pollution, global warming, habitat degradation, illegal unreported and unregulated fishing affects everyone, but nowhere is it acutely felt that at the local level in coastal villages, towns, and cities. The pandemic has demonstrated the intimate and intricate relationship between people and nature, between human health and ocean health, and the need to make this relationship right. This global pandemic, while affecting the way we work, also offers opportunities to support the blue-green recovery by harnessing more innovative ways to sustainably co-manage the coastal and marine resources. My presentation will describe PEMS's work in helping local governments transition towards this recovery. I will share practical examples of how some cities in the East Asian seas have adopted solutions such as combating marine plastic pollution from source to sea to increasing resilience to the impacts of climate change, among others. Now, by way of introduction to PEMSI, the East Asian seas region is characterized by marked differences in history, politics, economics, and culture. But we share one ocean and one uh, source of the boundary. The collaboration among like-minded countries started as a regional marine uh, pollution project to address eutrophication, nutrient loading, and oil spills. The project pioneered the application of integrated coastal management in two provinces, Xiamen in China and Batangas province in the Philippines. And they were successfully replicated in other cities and provinces in the region. From that small pollution project, governments in the region realized that sectoral approach is not the best way to tackle the complex interrelated problems confronting our seas. Governments recognized early on that integrated management solutions and strategic partnerships are key to protect, manage, and restore the seas and ocean. Partnerships are important if we are to maintain and sustain the ocean economy, given its tremendous value of providing food and nourishment, jobs, medicines, energy sources, protection, It has a unique operating modality. At the regional level, it shares uh, a regional strategic framework. And at the national level, it facilitates the development, updating, and monitoring of ocean policy and legislation, including on integrated coastal management. At the local level, it assists local governments in implementing integrated coastal management by offering technical services, training, and capacity development. PEMSI has created a network of local governments. It was officially launched in Haiku, China in 2006, and it was signed by 18 founding local governments, including uh, uh, cities like Changwon, Ansan, and, uh, uh, and Shiwa. Now it has 52 members. It is a unique regional community of local governments that are working towards sustainable growth and development in the region. Now, uh, Busan is soon to become a member. Um, we will swore it in at the PNLG General Assembly at the East Asian Seas Congress meeting on December 1. Guided by its vision of coastal areas through the East Asian region, managed sustainably, the PEMSI network of local government has played a critical role in implementing the shared strategy because it is the primary vehicle for implementing the integrated coastal management. 
A marine debris prevention initiative was launched at the 2019 PNLG Forum. It called for members to strengthen policies, regulations, institutional arrangements, monitoring and reporting, data sharing and experience sharing, management and advocating for blue citizen action to encourage participation from a broad range of stakeholders. Moreover, a PNLG policy forum on blue economy was organized to provide a platform for the member local governments and partners to share experiences and insights on blue economy approaches, identify policy concerns and options to facilitate blue economy development at the local level. Fifteen members shared locally driven initiatives with blue economy components from Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Timor-Leste, and Thailand. Uh, they had very practical examples of steps taken by, by these uh, cities to contribute to the economy. And I have a paper presentation that I could share with you to explain what they have been doing. Other well-documented case studies include the Siamen model of uh, integrated coastal management, where in the 1990s, PEMSI, in partnership with the Shaman local government introduced integrated coastal management to the city. Aiming to improve uh, the management of the marine environment, it has become one of the most successful ICM implementation and a model for other countries. ICM promotes the sustainable management of coastal areas alongside complementary economic activity. It encourages urban and territorial planning with long horizons, managing development to preserve the natural environment and build resilience against future threats uh, such as climate change. The Shaman model addresses sustainable industrialization and employment in coastal areas while working to protect the ecosystem in Siamen and neighboring marine areas. Policies and frameworks are designed to protect the ecosystems are created alongside dedicated allocation of resources. Through this, Siamen has reduced pollution, work to mitigate and adapt climate change while growing economically. The ICM process is iterative with an ongoing focus on creating a sustainable city. In Xiamen, marine functional zoning has been established as a low-cost and effective way of dealing with the conflicts over the use of marine resources. It also supports the development of maritime activities and promotes the research and monitoring of marine resources. There are various uh, environmental concerns uh, with, uh, that were considered within the marine uh, functional zone. Uh, it guides large-scale dre sea dredging, for example, large-scale aquaculture rehabilitation, and beach restoration. On the development side, it facilitates the creation of alternative employment options that support many fishers and other members of the local community. Innovative urban and territorial planning has emerged in a number of situations, such as wetland and mangrove restoration. These projects look at ways to contribute to the different areas of improvement, such as sustainable and resilient, and are based on modern technology and scientific findings. The investments made in this project are beneficial to both the long-term stakeholders and the public. The ICM and uh, Marine Functional Zoning Plans in Shaman will continue to be implemented, improved and shared with other cities to serve as model for improving coastal areas for sustainable develop city planning. Now there are many lessons learned um, uh, from its implementation, but uh, they have been able to do this through uh, covering different management aspects in an integrated framework, including having legislation, integrated coordination, scientific and technical support, comprehensive law enforcement, and public part participation. Pulling all this together is necessary to ensuring actions are, that are taken are so successful and sustainable. A multi-coordinating mechanism was also created uh, within the city to organize regular meetings be between the marine departments and facilitate the resolution of some conflicts and issues on ocean governance. A panel of experts on coastal planning and development and ecological and marine protection is regularly consulted. And uh, 
there has been some dedicated match by um, administrative task for marine functional zoning implementation. Public support and involvement are also critical. Research findings and sustainability initiatives are widely publicized through media to improve uh, public awareness. Now, such, yeah, this is a continuing process. Uh, um, it has been uh, since 1996 to date, so there, it has been almost uh, three decades of work. And uh, they're constantly and continually uh, sharing their knowledge and building capacity to maintain and enhance the effectiveness of coastal management into the future. There are two other uh, uh, cases, uh, coastal tourism in Da Nang, Vietnam, which promotes a win-win situation for achieving conservation, economic, and social goals. In the interest of time, I'm not going to talk about uh, this case study, but I will talk about the Singapore uh, Green Plan to 2030. Singapore's Green Plan 2030 aims to advance the country's national agenda on sustainable development and strengthen their ongoing efforts to fulfill the country's obligations under the Paris Agreement and support the achievement of the SDGs. The five key pillars include uh, city in nature, where Singapore will infuse greenery into the built environment and plant more than one million trees across the country. Energy reset is another component. In 2021, Singapore will complete one of the world's largest floating solar farms at one of its reservoirs. When ready, this farm will be sufficient to power all the local waterworks in the country and therefore in the process make Singapore one of the first countries in the world to accomplish this feat. Another component is sustainable living where they are going to implement zero waste master plan and, in, and close, to close the three major waste loops of electronics, plastics and food by applying circular economy approaches. The fourth one is on green economy, which tends to harness sustainability as the new cornerstone or engine for economic growth and job creation. Singapore, for example, will facilitate the first ship uh, uh, to contain uh, liquefied natural gas bankering operations in Asia. In addition, a fully automated and electrified new port is in the works for operation in 2040. The lastly, Resilient Future um, is the theme where Singapore intends to leverage science and technology to help build the country's climate change resilience and ensure food security. Examples of this would include adapting nature-based solutions to protect coastal ecosystems and locally and sustainably producing 30% of the country's nutritional needs. There are many common elements from among these experiences. They would include having strong and committed local leaders and champions. They need not be the local mayor or chief executives. They could be empowered environmental managers. Second would be to have integrated planning to achieve optimal outcomes and ensure balance between short-term and long-term priorities. Integrated coastal management is also important to achieve sustainable coast and marine development. Resources to fund and implement the plan, of course, as well as policies and resources that are formalized or institutionalized so that it won't be subject to political changes. Access to technical resources from universities and PEMC is important to help develop the plan and also to help uh, provide the data uh, through baseline studies and monitoring of such studies. The inclusion of stakeholders from low coastal communities, academe, NGOs, and private sector in the planning would um, ensure ownership and support from uh, the stakeholders. Documentation of good practices is also key because better documentation, especially in the socioeconomic impacts of the solutions, will go a long way in sustaining and upscaling initiatives and offering good leverage for more funding and more projects and programs. Lastly, communication and sharing of good practices and lessons with other LGUs and in fora such as this is also important because environmental management is not static. The work is a constant learning by doing and learning from others. 
Learning and knowledge sharing are not one of the exercises. So we organized joint uh, FEMSI Network of Local Government and FEMSI Network of Learning Centers learning events, which includes joint science policy forum, uh, joint uh, ICM executive training course to discuss management strategies and role of lo local executives. Uh, these are participatory training methodologies, field, uh, fields workshops, knowledge exchange sessions, etc. Joint study tours, um, you know, when the pandemic is over, can also provide local chief executives an understanding of a role of local government and empowering to implement and embrace these programs. In furthering the mission, vision, and goals of the PNLG, we are currently preparing the new strategic plan for 2022 to 2030 in alignment with the timeline of the new SDSC implementation plan 20, uh, and the global sustainability targets of the UN SDGs to 2030. This is developed in close coordination with the members with a view of launching the new strategic action plan at the EAS Congress again on December 1. In closing, in a region where there are varying economic and political resources, I would like to emphasize that every simple and small solution counts while contributing towards a broader transformation. I would like to close by inviting coastal cities and towns in Northeast Asia to become members of the PNLG, to share and learn from each other's local solutions, to contribute to a bigger, broader, and global impact. For more information, you can contact the Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries and agencies like P PNLG, KIOS, COEM, and KMI on how to go about implementing integrated coastal management and becoming a member of this network. It is never too late to start. And uh, with that, I end and I wish you a productive and successful forum. Thank you very much.